three, two, one, action. <laughs> <laughs> Fetal pig dissection, day one. Okay. Hey everybody, here we are doing virtual pig dissection. Yeah, your friend and mine, the fetal pig. And so we're gonna be doing that. It's me, of course. We have Mrs. Howard right here. We have Mr. Wolf right there who's playing with Madison. And of course, our cameraman, or actually the camera woman, <laughs> yeah, come is Miss Mokros. <laughs> All right, so today, um, for my classes, those people that haven't done the pre-lab probably should make sure they get this thing done uh, very soon. Use the PowerPoint that I have on Canvas for you. Um, as you're doing this thing, you can skip number seven. We're not gonna worry about the lateral and dorsal views because we're doing the work, not you. And so then make sure you do the back part. And for my students, you can go ahead and work with a partner on this thing. Um, you just need one paper to turn in, uh, make sure both names are on it. So, you know, I don't know how you're gonna do that. You know, maybe as a Google doc or something like that, but you'll make sure that you do it that way. Just submit one. All right, so that's the fetal pig pre-lab. Make sure you get all of that done. Excellent. All right. Okay, external anatomy. Number one, obtain a fetal pig and rinse off the excess preservative by holding it under running water. Lay the pig on its side in the dissecting pan and locate dorsal, ventral, and lateral surfaces. Also locate the anterior and posterior ends. All right, I'll show you those quickly. Uh, this would be the, the uh, dorsal surface. Flip it over. The belly is the ventral surface. Head is the anterior end, and the uh, rear end is the posterior end. Now these pigs came in preservatives, and so that's why we want to rinse them off. You guys can't smell them. They don't smell too bad, um, but with the pigs, sometimes in the classroom, the smell gets really bad. There's no blood in them. As you can see from this red and this blue, or this pink and this blue, um, they've, su they've sucked all the blood out and they've put in latex paint. Um, we have the red going into the arteries and the blue going into the veins. So you don't have to worry about blood squirting everywhere as we're doing all this stuff. Sadly, that's not oh, gonna yeah. happen. <laughs> now preservatives might squirt out. We can only hope. <laughs> Step two, a fetal pig has not been born yet, but its approximate age since conception can be estimated by measuring its length. Measure your pig's length from the tip of its snout to the base of its tail. We have done this for you. Use the length age chart on the sheet or inside cover or probably on the PowerPoint. It'll be on the PowerPoint. To determine the age of the fetal pig and record this. Step three, examine the pig's head. Locate the eyelids in the external ears or pinnae. Find the external nostrils. Here's the, uh, see the external ears here with some, uh, so some of the membrane parts on it that was uh, had on it when it was inside its mother. The nose? Is that what was yes, nostril. Nose? There we go. Ew. The bubbly of the, uh, <laughs> the preservative yeah. fluid, but there you go. <laughs> Anything else? Did you do the ears? Yep. Okay. Step four, study the pig's appendages and examine the pig's toes. Count and record the number of toes and the type of hoof the pig has. There we go. So it's got one, two, three, four. In the back, same thing. One, two, three, four. So you'll have to, that's one of the things I don't know for my students, so you'll have to do a little research there and figure out what kind of hoof that is that would uh, look like that and have four toes. Deer also have toes just like that. Step five, locate the umbilical cord. With scissors, cut across the cord about one centimeter from the body. So those have And that's the umbilical been... cord, not something else. <laughs> yeah, it's not the, uh, it's not telling you the gender yet. So do you want to do the other one? What these have you? already been cut. This one probably, well, no, it hasn't. It's got the colors in it. Maybe, so we'll make a cut in the way. No. There we go. So again, you can see 
What does it say? Then examine the three openings in the umbilical cord. So the largest is the umbilical vein, which carries right blood from the placenta to the fetus. The two smaller openings are the umbilical arteries, There's which carry blood from the fetus to the placenta. Remember, arteries are going to be the pink ones, and the veins are the blue. I'll do one this one, too. I'll show the same things again. There's the larger one, the two small ones. Step six, lift the pig's tail to find the anus. Hey. Study Time the, to get personal. Easy. Study the ventral surface of the pig and note the tiny bumps called mammary papillary. These are present in both sexes. In the female, these structures connect to the mammary glands. This one's actually a little easier to see as I'm dripping mm -hmm. everywhere. Definitely. Are cold. <laughs> Were they out here? They've been out in the garage. Yeah. Cold Step pig. seven. <laughs> Determine the sex of your pig by locating the urogenital opening through which liquid waste and reproductive cells pass. In the male, the opening is on the ventral surface of the pig, just posterior to the umbilical cord. In the female, the opening is ventral to the anus. Record the sex of the pig. Hmm. So, uh, if you see, there's only one opening here, which is the anus. There's nothing, like she said, there's nothing ventral, which is this direction. There's nothing there. So this is look. Look at the slides. Figure out to, which one it is. One opening. Yeah, and then look at the slides. Only can one you read opening. Read that part again about the opening posterior to the umbilical present. In the male, the opening is on the ventral surface of the pig, just posterior to the umbilical cord. Umbilical cord. There we go. Okay. Skipping eight, number nine, with scissors, make a three centimeter incision in each corner of the pig's mouth. Your incision should honors. extend posteriorly through that. the jaw. <laughs> Extra. I will add to this that you guys, uh, you're not getting to do this yourselves, and this is always a student favorite doing this part, which, to be honest, this might be the only part that I find slightly oh. disturbing. I don't oh, find I'll it do disturbing. It. Oh, I don't, I don't care. Maybe. I mean, it just, <laughs> all right, so we make some, some cuts here. We're going to cut through the mouth right now, and it's the crunching sound of the scissors going through the bones that a lot of students don't like to hear. <laughs> she didn't like it either. How's my cutting technique, people? Oh, beautiful. That's great. All right, Miss Howard. So we made the cuts. Let's All say that. right. I'll give you that. Number 10. Spread the jaws open and examine the tongue. Here we go. Tongue. All right, so there's the tongue. You can see along the edges right here are these little rough feathery looking things. I think that's one of the questions that you'll have to answer. So that's the tongue. Number 11, observe the palate on the roof of the mouth. The Did anterior part of the palate is the hard palate. That would be this part up front. While the posterior part is the soft palate. Take your tongue and run it up on your, the roof of your mouth. The front part's hard, but as you take your tongue and go backwards, it gets softer. And that's this part right here. It's called the soft palate. And you, know, you can sort of do that with your tongue if you can get that thing to go all the way back, your tongue all the way back. Don't choke right. yourself. <laughs> all right. Step 12, locate the epiglottis, a tone-shaped structure at the back of the mouth. Should have brought paper towels. That would be that thing right there. That's... Above the epiglottis, find the round opening of the nasopharynx. It's going to be this hole that back down in here. You can't really see it too well. Of course, we're trying to jam all kinds of things in there, but 
it's so the good. probe is in going into the nasal pharynx. This cavity carries air from the nostrils to the trachea, a large tube in the thoracic which supplies air to the lungs. The trachea is what you can feel in your throat when you run your fingers up and down your throat, those little ridges. Those are the trachea. This, this is again the epiglottis and that would go down into the trachea <clears throat> where the probe is going. And in those, this one going this direction, the nasopharynx goes up towards the nose. Let's air come in through the nose. Step 13, dorsal to the glottis, find the opening to the esophagus. We're not really gonna be able to see that too well. It's gonna be down inside here and you can almost get the idea it's down in there, but we really can't see that too well. Examine the tongue and note tiny projections called sensory papillae. 14, examine the teeth of the pig. Canine teeth are longer for tearing food. And you can see these things right here. They're pretty good size. And you know, I've had students actually cut themselves <laughs> on there because you know they weren't paying attention. They ran their fingers all over those teeth. There's two, there's two on the front and then just behind them, there's some smaller ones. So my probe is actually in between two different teeth. While incisors are shorter and used for biting. Canines, incisors. <laughs> Pigs are omnivores, eating plants and animals. Number 15, label the drawing of the inside of the pig's mouth. I don't have my day pit one papers here. Where did I put them? So this will be one of the paper, you know, that you guys are filling in and answering questions on as you follow along with the dissection. Ah. So there would be a day one paper. Okay. You'll have to do the day one paper, sorry. Don't have one to show you. Is that it? Mm -hmm.